you talk about uh, self-reflection, it's important that we realize that all of us by nature are born with the eyes facing outward, right? So when we are uh, talking about self-reflection, it's not very natural for people, for even people who meditate regularly, that we uh, do a lot of self-reflection. We tend to look outside uh, most of the time when our eyes are facing outwards from our birth, right? So that's uh, it's, it's something that we are not very used to at times to self-reflect. But since meditation is such an intangible skill to do, it's also um, uh, something that we should uh, um, should uh, learn to do. It's intangible, but if we are knowing how to do it, then we can have more insight into, um, well, we can, if we know how to review, it will be more possible, more easier to uh, get into insight into how our meditation is developing. So I think you can see this. This is the, the way, uh, this is the part that I was just talking about. So um, let me continue with this. For some so in, the Buddhist, uh, in the Buddha's teaching, there is a lot of uh, talk about uh, self-reflection. This is an image from a traditional story when the Buddha is talking about self-reflection to his son, uh, who was a, a little, uh, who uh, joined the monk's life from a young age. Uh, so he told him that it's important to reflect on himself. So let's now talk about specifically how to, uh, how meditation, self-reflection is important in meditation and how we can do it. So self-reflection in meditation is a sort of keep, sort of, is a way to keep a diary. Now in generally a diary, you could say, can be like a teacher to yourself. When we uh, sometimes keep notes on how our meditation is going, then in that way we can also have a record. And when we face problems in meditation, we can then go back to how we once did before and how we solve problems. If you remember from the traditional story of the Buddha's life, even in the Buddha's life, there was some struggle with meditation. Well, before he really devoted himself to meditation only, he had some questions in his mind as to how he was going to attain enlightenment. And eventually reflection when he was still young, when he was still a child, when he was still living in the palace or living with his noble family, suddenly made him realize that to move forward, to attain enlightenment, to attain to clarity of mind, he had to go back to a memory that he once had as a child when he was meditating. Because he was already, since he was a child, he meditated once and it was, it was a meditation which was very deep and profound. So when he was an adult now, and he had already become a monk, he thought back of this moment. So self-reflection and keeping a record of one's experiences can be a very good way to help you to uh, fall back to later in your life. It's also very inspiring to have some record of your meditation experience because it helps you to uh, it it helps you to 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 understand what's going on better. And if you sometimes don't have uh, are not in the mood for meditation, just to have a meditation diary or meditation journal can sometimes be an extra inspiration to just make that push in the beginning to keep up the routine. So these are some examples of what we can write about in a meditation diary or when we are having a journal of a meditation. Uh, the sense of well-being is the most important part. So uh, 
let's not focus too much on the technicalities straight away. Let's first ask ourselves the question, how was our meditation? Did we feel happy? Did we feel open and relaxed? Or was our mind very narrowed and tense? It's all okay to write about, but we should uh, write some record. And we can also write about the meditation object that is very, uh, this is very technically written down. But what I mean by that is that uh, the center of the body, of course. So the center of the body, or if you want to call it that way, the center space or the center station, this is like the, the focus, or you might say the, 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 the point or the place where we guide our mind to. And that is something we can write about as well. Where we dare, did we feel we were connecting with the center of the body? Did the center of the body connect with us? Or was that not uh, possible? So that is uh, something that uh, we can write about as well. Some people even like to draw something, to make a drawing of their experience because some experiences are difficult to put into words. But if we make a drawing, it can be a very nice way to write some, to make a record for yourself to go back to later on. It's an inspiration for others as well, if you'd like to share with others. It's also important to emphasize the positive experiences. This is in general, this is not one aspect of meditation, but it's more like a, a thing to take with you when you are going to keep a meditation journal. So I remember once meditating with a, non, with a couple of monks together when um, about 10 years ago, I think. And when at that time, uh, Lompal Tamachio, our teacher and abbot was guiding the monks. And he was asking every monk about their experience. Now, one of the monks was a little older and he had difficulty concentrating in meditation because he, his, his body, he was a little older. He had many aches and, and back, back ache, and other aches, my other pains. So it was kind of difficult for him to meditate uh, as he was also trying to meditate on the floor, of course, sitting on a chair, sitting on a seat on the floor. So it was kind of difficult for him. So sorry about that. Maybe somebody could just uh, um, mute their sound. This is not coming from me. I don't have a television here. Um, yeah, I don't know who that was. So um, yes. So when he was meditating and he was explaining it to the abbot after his meditation. The abbot, he did not criticize him at all. And he also did not uh, uh, just encourage him in general, but he specifically asked, were you relaxed during the meditation? He said, well, I wasn't really relaxed, but perhaps there was some time when you were relaxed. And then he said, yes, I was relaxed for about uh, some time in the middle of the session. I was quite calm at that time, but later on I felt pain. And then the abbot said, well, then expand that time a little for next time. So this is the way our abbot and teacher of meditation, he always thinks. He was always positive, positive. Uh, he always focuses on the positive part of our progress in meditation. And every little progress is important for him. And so he would never discourage anyone from continuing with meditation. So these are the little steps of progress that we notice when we're meditating. There's actually a story of somebody who was going to see the Buddha, but he felt very discouraged because he had to go through a very wild forest to meet the Buddha. And then the story goes that uh, some spirit from the forest encouraged him and said, every step that you take to see the Buddha and learn to meditate is worth thousands of elephants. <laughs> so this was like an uh, encouragement. And eventually he came to meet the Buddha and he was one of the most important supporters of Buddhism at that time. 
Uh, more on a, an example, which is a little closer to home, we can give the example of uh, uh, bamboo trees. Have anyone ever heard of that? Bamboo trees or like a bamboo forest? Yes. Yes, Frank, I'm not sure who said that, but yes, uh, it was Frank, huh? Good, thank you. Yes, that was me. Uh, yeah, the, this is a comparison. This is a metaphor that has been going viral for a while now. This a story about, uh, it's actually a story uh, about, uh, from the Jewish tradition. Um, but uh, this story says that somebody came to see uh, a rabbi about his uh, bamboo that he had planted in his garden. And he said that this bamboo, it grow, it, he planted and he watered it every day, but it never grew. And he was, he was very fed up with it. And then he, his uh, rabbi said to him, well, you, you, you're not, you're not really seeing things as they really are because it's actually growing all the time. You're just not aware of it. And he encouraged him to continue. And later on, the bamboo actually grow, grew very high. You see this bamboo that he had planted, this was actually Chinese bamboo. Now Chinese bamboo can grow up to 30 meters high, but it needs to grow uh, many roots before it can grow that high. That's why he didn't see anything happen because the plant was simply growing its roots. So sometimes in meditation, we have to think like the rabbi and understand that we are rooting, that we are learning the foundations, that we might not be enlightened yet, but we just gradually step-by-step step, learning. And sometimes you may be uh, discouraged, but we just give some time to it every day and the meditation will gradually progress. Keeping a record has many ways, there's many ways to do that. When I made that presentation that you just saw, uh, talking about uh, keeping a meditation diary, I didn't, uh, at that time, there were no applications for keeping track of your meditation yet. But in the present day, there are. So even a telephone, an application on your smartphone can help you keep a record. There's a number of those. Personally, I like to use a, an application which is called News, which actually allows you to, uh, to keep track of your meditation. But uh, there's different kinds of applications also from our temple. I believe there is one that is called Mind Stories, but I, it's just uh, been uh, started. So I, have not, I haven't checked it out yet. It's, been made, it's, it's being made by one of our teaching monks who helps to produce it. And there is also the meditation application called Mind Gem. That is mind and then gem, as in jewel. So that is a, an application, but it doesn't allow you to record, record your experiences that much. There's not much detail there, but it does allow you to listen to meditation guidances. And it's, it's called Mind Gem and you can find it for I think both Android and uh, Apple. I'm also on there. So if you want to hear some guided meditations by me, you can also find them there. So uh, finally, uh, I, there's a lot to say in favor of just keeping a record, a journal uh, on paper, because you will also be able to make drawings or more creative intuitive notes on there, which you cannot in a more digital application. So just having a journal on paper can be very good. It will also be something you can keep for a long time in posterity. And it will be an encouragement for you and other people later on. So this is just one aspect of meditation. And if you can remember, it's also one form uh, of practice that I mentioned before when I talked about the 10 practices with regard to keeping your meditation alive in your everyday life. So this is one of those 10 practices. So uh, I hope you didn't mind that today was a bit uh, uh, late, uh, but I, I came five minutes late uh, because I wasn't sure whether it had started. Uh, I wasn't sure yet uh, whether I had misunderstood something, but uh, that won't be a problem uh, uh, for, the, for the next time. 
just uh, let you know that uh, yeah, there is also somebody who put it on chat, the Mind Jam application. And um, if you have any questions, uh, there is a bit of time left. If you have any, 